as you can tell, this video is going to be a little different than the ones that you've seen before. We're going to talk about a couple of different things. My story in my stitches and your story in your stitches. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself, why I'm in here, what happened over here over my head, why I'm in front of the pegboard that wasn't there a few minutes ago and is there now. And then I'm going to ask you at the end if you've got a story you'd like to tell too because I want to share them as well. So I'm going to run the video now and I'll meet you at the end. Hi, welcome back to Lakeside Quilt Making Arts. I know this looks like your just typical run-of-the-mill DIY show instead, but this is actually about the story behind the stitches. All of us have a story to go into our stitches. That's why you know, that's part of our, our drive and our imagination and our passion for what we're doing. Well, I've had a little too much passion lately. I've been driving forward, driving forward, driving forward without the proper infrastructure in my studio to maintain the pace that I've been working. So I decided instead of doing comfort in the waiting today, which is our typical Wednesday release video, we're going to take care of a few things. Yesterday, we cleaned out the sewing machine and it looks great, runs great. I am going to add a little bit more oil to it before I use it, just to, or check it at least to make sure it's in good shape because I'm not sure I added enough. But, so if you didn't see that video, go ahead and, and uh, switch over to yesterday's video whenever you get a chance and watch that. It's about 25 minutes. It shows you how to clean underneath the um, bobbin and how to clean the moving parts inside and this is a heavy duty Singer 4423 I believe but I'm sure the concepts of it applies to to other machines so what are we doing today we're gonna put up a billboard not a billboard a pegboard and originally I wanted them to be vertical two of them side by side there I've got two pieces that well, actually I've got I think four pieces but each one is a two by four panel and I wanted them to be vertical so they would be on either side of this light. And this light is in the middle of the cable that goes over there. But um, I, I would have to be a little trickier about how I put up my furring strips um, in order to do that. And I don't want to be that elaborate with my effort. So I'm just going to go with two two by fours rectangles going horizontal above the table, which will be fine absolutely fine there's nothing wrong with that to do that i'm going to require a furring strip at the bottom of each board and the top of each board so i need to put up four of these these are furring strips i ran by lowe's on the way up to a doctor's appointment yesterday thought this would be no big deal i'll get them to slice them in half get eight foot sticks and you know slice them in half because my pegboard is eight uh four feet wide be perfect well their machine had just run down so I had to spend some time today um, hand sawing it. I do have a table saw and some other, I have a, a power miter saw, but someone's borrowing that one. Um, the table saw I didn't want to get out. I would have to move some things in my garage. So I just use my little, it's called a flush saw and it's, they're used for, I didn't bring it in here, but I'll show it on the screen. They're really thin and they're like, if you have a nub of something sticking out of a board, they're used for gliding right across the top of a surface and cutting something off at the, cutting something flush at the top of that surface. And um, so they're kind of flexible. They're really thin. It's easy to do. I just actually did it in my kitchen. I just clamped it down to my island table, my island kitchen counter there and then had my vacuum on there ready to suck up all the dust. And it was actually easier to do that and clean up in my kitchen than it would have been if I had done it out in my garage. Just because my that section of my garage where my tools are is just not organized yet. My son came to help me last summer um, between surgeries. And is that right? Where did he come? I can't recall when he came. <laughs> um, I had two big surgeries last summer and he came at some point for one of them. And he was in, you know, he was driven to help me out. So he cleaned out my garage and we got all of my tools to one section, but I don't have that area organized yet. But kudos to him that the garage is in as good a shape as it is. Because uh, when I moved two years ago, I was in various stages of ability to function. And then I just went further downhill 
And uh, so getting the house organized um, was something I just barely got done after this past surgery, once I was able to get around more consistently and more easily. Um, hallelujah, right? Amen. Hallelujah. Praises and praises and praises. I'm so grateful. Okay, so what do we have to do? We've got to figure out where our boards are going to go. So I know how high my table is, and I, I'm going to remeasure everything. I've done this in my head, but I haven't actually written down the numbers. I want to kind of sketch it out. I'll do that um, before I start marking and drilling. But I've got all my tools that I'm going to need. I've got a drill. i got um, drill bits. These are titanium. <laughs> I, I swear I have a love-hate relationship with titanium, um, but these will help me to drill holes into the wood to accept my screws. And then I have my I have my stud finder. Great, you can get all these heart tools from Walmart. I I love this line. Um, I was an ambassador at some point, and then. Again, my health went downhill big time. Um, had, I've had a series of surgeries to fix those things. This is great. So you just slide it, you put it against the wood, the wall, and I'll show you, maybe you'll see it from there. If not, I'll give you a close up of it. Um, you just put it against the wall and as you slide it over, you push the button, as you slide it over, you can tell where you get close to a stud and when you're in the middle of a stud. And then there's a little point right there to receive your pencil mark so you can mark uh, where your studs are. So I'll put these furring strips into the wall on those studs. So that's going to be nice and secure. What you have to achieve is you have to have enough depth behind your pegboard so that you can, it can receive the, let me see where that is. Hang on. All right. See this tool has to fit in there with enough room. Can you see this? I'm going to put it back here. Yeah, so this little, um, what do you call it, a hanger, I guess it is. So you have to have enough room behind the board so that when you put the hook in, it has room to go as far back as it needs to before it can twist up. Once it's in the twisted up position, it doesn't need as much room as you would think. But to get there, you've got to have more room. So you don't want to, every time you put one of these into your board, you don't want to be scraping it a hole into your um, into your drywall. So the furring strips will keep this pushed away from the wall, give you room to use your hanging hooks and um, so you can you know, rearrange things as you need to. And with all those details out of the way, I'm gonna start doing my quilty math of a different sort. And that would be construction math so that I can get back to quilting. The table is 52 inches. Sixty-four inches. Okay, so what I figured out is I'm going to want to have five inches on the other side of my table and seven inches to the left uh, of the table, which means seven, seven inches from my, the left of the table over to the window, to the window's frame. Okay, so that tells me where the right outside edge of my board will have to be, of my pegboard. And my pegboard, let's just double check, they're 48 inches. The boards are 47 and 13 sixteenths, basically 47 and three quarters. Okay, so what do I need to do next? I need to make sure that they are exactly 24 inches the other way. They are 23 and 14 sixteenths. Interesting, so they're just shy of two by four. I guess that tells you the um, width of the saw that they use to cut it. All right. Uh, what's next? How high do I want it to be? How much space do I have? If this is... Interesting. 
interesting. So my ceilings in here are only seven feet tall. I didn't realize that. 84 inches. Interesting. So 84 inches. And I've got 30, what did I say here? 36. Can this go up any higher? If this can go up higher, I'd be very happy. The higher a surface is, the less I have to lean over and use my lumbar or dangle, you know, the weight of this bowling ball on top of my spine. Um, I don't know if you have any neck issues, but you can tell when the weight of it is hanging off of something that isn't feeling strong. Forty inches right there. It's almost as tall as my table. I wonder if I can get it as tall as my table. My cutting table, I believe, is 43 inches. Now, my cutting table is 41 inches. So let's see if I can get this up to 41. Almost needs to go a little more than a half of an inch. You'd think I was super tall with tall tables in here. But I am not excellent. Excellent. All right. So if this is 41 and I put 48 inches with that, what is that? 41 and 48, that is 89 inches. I can't have this at 41 inches and put four feet of board. So what I'm understanding here is that if I want this table to be as tall as my cutting table, which is 41 inches, then I can't put 48 inches of pegboard above it because I don't have enough room because the ceiling is at 84 inches. So the question is, if I put, if I put the boards up horizontally, they're going to start beneath the back of the table instead of having instead of starting above it i don't think i like the way that would look so i've got to think about this what do i want to do i could put them on this wall i was going to put a sign over here like i was going to quilt together a sign that says um, boldly go or makers gonna make or um, make it you know something along those lines or a color wheel has come to mind or just change it out you know putting a um, design board there oh drafts because I have a spare design board that I thought I might put right there I mean, I don't have to have this at 41 inches, but it serves me better if it is. It's better for my neck if this is taller when I'm coming over here to use it. And I've got to protect what's left of my neck. My neck is unstable between C5 and T1, especially between C7 and T1. And I can't have any more hardware fit in because I'm allergic to it. So I gotta make sure I take care of my neck. So how many inches? It'd be five inches of board underneath this. Since I can't put up both, the question then is, do I just put up one, one horizontal board? I think I need to think about that for a minute. I don't think I stand a chance to visualize how it's gonna look without this being in place. So I'm gonna put it back, pick up the rug. Why? That's not reaching the ceiling.
My math is not working out. And this is why <laughs> we measure and measure and measure and measure again. Because how many times did you see me run this measuring tape against that wall? And I kept on seeing it read, what did I say, 80 something? I kept on seeing it reading 84, but it's 96. I've got plenty of room. I was misreading the measuring tape. Whenever it was up high, I was looking up at it and I was looking at it sideways and I was just misreading the measuring tape. I've got plenty of room, plenty of room. I'm glad I pushed this thing back over here. I kept on thinking it should make sense, but I thought, you know, math doesn't lie. Well, this is why in the carpentry construction world, they say measure twice, cut once. Well, before I started drilling into my drywall, I wanted to make sure I did the same even if that means measuring 50 times. Okay, so I've got about five inches above the pegboard, 48 inches of pegboard. So I'm gonna put three above it, two beneath it. They tell me what I need to know. I know where I wanna come in from the right side and where I wanna come in from the left side. We're making progress. See the space behind the board? I can't get it any tighter. What I failed to do, I did do a pilot hole into the stud, but not deep, but not deeply enough. So what I need to do is take this board off like I did the one above it, and then take the screws and put them into the studs to, so that I have a good bite all the way into that stud so that this can go as flush as this one above it is. Uh, there's no room. You can see the shadow, but that doesn't mean there's any room back there. It's right up against the wall. Well, clearly I have some work to do yet, but I've come a long way. Today's video is all about creating some organization in the studio. I put up these two pegboards instead of working on the um, comfort and the waiting hashtag Avery Quilts quilt because I had to. I just had to. For Sunday's video, I realized that I needed to kind of do a reset because I was on a trajectory that was not congruent with what the teachings were. So I realized that it didn't matter how much I uh, was turning my little feet underneath the water, I was not going to get caught up immediately. So why not, you know, take a step back and kind of work on my infrastructure a little bit, kind of do a reset. And then that made sense to take that throughout the rest of the studio. So yesterday I worked on my sewing machine. It desperately needed it. This corner has had my pegboard standing up on the tabletop so the tabletop wasn't usable. And underneath the table was not really well used at all. It looked kind of jumbled up and that's not going to have an immediate fix. I've got ideas about how I can utilize that space so it uh, looks nice. Right now it doesn't, you know, it's just an empty space but I'm going to be putting some buckets and um, you know, plastic containers under there. It's not going to be ideal, but it will be something so that I'm not stretched out through the rest of the house, which I, I that's not my MO. I don't like for things to be, and I like things to be in their own space. And I've got other things to do, like my ironing board. I want that to go away and put an ironing station in there that has storage. I have a way to do that that costs me money, and I have a way to do that that does not cost me money. The way that doesn't cost me money is to get a piece of furniture that's at a rental in Huntsville, 45 minutes away, and bring that here. I just need to coordinate to do that. 
So that will be a flat surface that I can put a wool mat on. I'll just start with the same small wool mat that I have. Uh, until I can get a larger one, and then it's got shelves underneath it that I can put boxes and, um, you know, project boxes and that kind of thing. So that's going to help me to create the structure I need to be producing six videos a week and producing the quilts. I needed my studio to work and function differently than it did, and um, so I'm learning that and I'm, so I'm having to backtrack a little bit and figure out what works for me in this environment of creating content and creating quilts and then editing it and putting it up for you guys. It's a fine balance. It's a lot of work. That's not a complaint. I actually enjoy every single second of it. So therefore, I want to invest myself in how my space works. So. I've got a clean sewing machine. I've got a clean space over here. I've got the beginnings of structure here. I've got to get more of the little hooks and things like that to go there. I've got to give some thought to how to well use that space. And, you know, everything will evolve over time, right? Everything will evolve over time. Uh, but I'm, I'm pretty happy with what I got done. It was a lot of work. It was a lot of work, but this is, you know, all of our stitches have stories behind them. And, you know, my story is, you know, I've, I've said it a gazillion times to you guys. I was pretty debilitated, various, it's a roller coaster of debilitation over 12 years. And um, I had to have several big surgeries to get me over that hump. I didn't know what I'd be able to do. November of 22, I was lying in the recliner recovering from what's called an occipital fusion. Um, and it was unable to move my head at all, and it was not straight. It was over about 13, 15 degrees, and um, I had loose screws. It, it was pretty miserable. It was, but even though it was very painful and it had a lot of limitations, my brain stem was no longer being compressed, and so I was feeling better. <laughs> uh, but what I was doing in that chair while I was recovering, because it took a long time to recover, I was lying there thinking, what can I do? Okay, so now, now that my brain stem is not compressed, what can I do with my head not being able to move it? Well, I can't do the gardening that I used to enjoy. I can't do... The DIY stuff I used to do, I can't do all kinds of things more than in short bursts. And so I need to make sure I'm protecting the rest of my joints. So it's got to be something inside the house. It's, you know, but it's got to be creative or I'm going to go crazy. So I thought, well, Dawn, you used to enjoy quilting, but you gave it up. You think you could get back into it. I pulled up some YouTube videos and I found the quilt show, Back Quarter Shop and Missouri Star. And I was hooked. Oh my gosh, there was just no questioning anything else. You know, just this is the new direction. Um, fast forward a few months and I had that hardware taken out because I was not only had um, one of one or two of the screws become um, loose, I was allergic to all the hardware. So I had that hardware out and then six weeks later I had a second surgery on my spinal cord and um, it was very difficult um, time. It was difficult to move around, uh, to go anywhere. I was in a wheelchair, a motorized wheelchair. Um, I was able to move my body, but it was very hard to move my body, to move especially the right side of my body. So it's been a story, you know, and these are that's the story behind my stitches, and that's the story behind my studio. So I know this space has to evolve. As my story has evolved, this space will evolve with me. But I am here and committed to this channel and to producing quilts and doing them for a community of patients who are on children patients, pediatric patients who are on a transplant waiting list. And I'm all about being here in this quilting community. So please forgive me that I'm not producing a quilt today for us to talk about and seeing the next stages of it. We will be doing that. I, I am... I'm so committed to doing this. I'm so committed to this channel. I'm committed to this community. I'm committed to, the, to this trajectory in my life. 
And so don't think that just because we've had a reset video, a snow machine video, and a DIY video doesn't mean that I'm going to be, um, you know, that doesn't mean that I'm going to be changing the, the trajectory of this channel. I'm very much committed to to what I'm doing. It's, um, I'm, I feel very, very blessed to have gone through the surgeries I have and have the ability to function the way I do. I function better than I did two months ago, and I swear I function better than I did a month ago. And I, I pinch myself almost every day about the um, growth and progression of my healing. I just can't believe it. I would not have believed it any worse from 2017 to now. I would not believe that I'd be able to do the things that I'm doing. But I know that I have to do them at a pace that um, I have to be monitoring myself, my exertion, and make sure I don't hurt myself. Because the reason I have had all these issues is I have a connective tissue disorder. All of my connective tissue is faulty. And that has created some um, that has created some malfunctioning inside most all of the joints, and so there are other joints that um, are unstable and causing problems. So I have to make sure that I am always aware that I'm not hurting those because I can't have any more fusions. If I absolutely need one to be able to save my life or save my spinal cord, then we have to go into it very trepidatiously and knowing that we've got to pay treat me for an infection, treat me for a reaction to it, and then take that hardware out as soon as the bones are fused. And that's just arduous, right? So the best thing to do is to stay off of the cut, stay off of the operating table. Stay inside a quilting studio and put my story in my stitches. So now you guys know, this is my, my love, my passion. I, why I welcome you into my space. I let you see the reality of it. Yeah, I'm a newbie at this, but my passion for it is decades old, decades old. I'm just grateful that you're here with me. If you have any questions, just let me know. I, I recorded it all. Uh, and as you can tell, while I've played this, I've, you know, put it in the picture in picture so you can kind of see it. The, um, it, it is very doable. It's not hard. It's, it just takes a lot of it just takes a lot of concentration, you know, a lot of up and down on the ladder. I realized after I got that top pegboard up, its peg, its holes are different size than the one on the bottom. It's three sixteenths, and the one on the bottom is quarter. Was it going to take it down? No. <laughs> Might I sometime? It, it's going to depend. If I ever look at that thing and say, "Man, those holes don't line up," then maybe. But right now. No, it's going to be just fine. Right now, I'm just anxious to find something to put on it to decorate that board and make it functional, how to make my space functional. As the infrastructure develops and changes, I'll be keeping you guys abreast of it too because I know that, you know, just like I joined that Facebook group about quilting sewing rooms organization, it's and we all feed off of that, right? I Every time I see somebody else's studio, I see the studio of one of you guys, I'm paying attention to like, how they're doing this, how they're doing that. Can I take it? Can I absorb that into my space? If I do that, well, it functioned for me. I may admire something that you're doing, but know that it doesn't function well for me. Same thing here. You may see something I'm doing and, and say, no way that'd work for me. Or you may say, I would never have thought of that, whatever it is. You want to know what my lights are? Um, you know, I, there's an odd light here on the sewing, sewing table. And the sewing table, by the way, is just a computer table. It's, it has a drop space where I put my sewing machine, that drop space for the keyboard. Um, but I put my sewing machine in there. And so that brings the bed of the sewing machine right up to where the top of the table is. So it's not too bad for like a $119 table. It folds up like a banquet table, and if I ever wanted it to just go away for some reason, it could. I don't want it to go away. I do like how modular it is. As, you'll, as you may have seen in the video that played in the picture in picture, this, um, this is one of the Husky, you know, some Home Depot or Lowe's, it's one of the Husky tables, and it you can crank it up. It can go up higher. Right now, it's the same height as the cutting table, which is good. I think it I think it was 41 inches. I need height. 
because uh, I don't need to lean over with my head, the weight of my head pulling on this lower joint back here or on the, you know, the strain of that on the lumbar. And, you know, this, I, had, I didn't have a high like that before. So this was another good exercise for me as every time you go through your space and you're revamping how you're using it, I think we all improve our spaces for ourselves. It, you know, guys, it is almost spring. It, today, I didn't need a coat out. I walked yesterday without a coat, walked with my dog to the park, no coat whatsoever, and I was warm. Today, I had the air conditioning on. Now, I'm in Alabama. I know some of you still have some really cold temperatures, but spring is practically here. This is a perfect time to do some spring cleaning. So I hope that's what this has done. I hope that me sharing my, my story, sharing my studio, sharing where I am, it gets you even more passionate about your space and what you're doing to shore up your capacity and your capabilities to do your quilting for as long as you want to. Every year that you can extend to the quality of your life. I, now, I know some of you may be 20 or 30 years old out there and, and, and be healthy. You don't have to be healthy just because you're 20 or 30. But if you are at whatever age, and I know it could be hard to appreciate the things that I'm saying. But if you don't take care of your body by doing things like raising your tables, having a good lumbar support, having wheels on your chair instead of leaning over on your lumbar while you're at your workspace, leaning over to your ironing space, leaning over to your sewing machine, leaning over to your cutting. That's horrendous on your, on your lumbar and your uh, pelvis and SI joints. That's why I want to get a chair with wheels for my sewing table, for my sewing area. I could go on and on, and you will probably hear tips from me um, ongoing about how to be more ergonomically conscientious about this craft. If we want to do it, we don't want to stop doing this just because our bodies won't let us. We want to stop doing it if we, for some reason, fall in love with another passion, right? I can't imagine that because if you're into quilting, I don't know how you become unaddicted to it. Is that possible? don't think so. Before I let you guys go, I want to just say thank you to everybody who has been um, leaving comments, encouraging me, guiding me, directing me, people who have been um, subscribing. That's huge too. All of that helps to build the channel and that's a huge help to me. It's exciting for me, um, somebody who's freshly on the outside of a debilitating health crisis, to have this opportunity that YouTube provides to us to be able to um, use a craft, something a passion of ours, and turn that into an income source. And all you got to do is just watch, you know, subscribe, watch, like, share, all those different, you know, innocent, easy things to do. And it gives me a chance to actually be productive again, as wonderfully as I'm doing. I don't think I could go out and get a job and, and hold it. Because I, I, my ability to reform is not consistent. There are just a lot of variables to my health still that I can work around here inside the house doing a YouTube channel that I don't think I could manage um, consistently out if I had a job outside of the home. So I thank you from the bottom of my heart for everybody who is helping me build this channel. I know this has been a very unusual video today. Um, a lot of talk about my backstory. But I wanted to leave you with this concept that we all have our stories. And it's, and that's why each one of those stitches are so precious. If you look at, if you look at a quilt, whether it's sewn by machine or sewn by someone's hands, it is precious because someone has poured themselves into it. There's so much that goes into it, how they've organized their life to provide for themselves in that manner so that they can be in that craft room or that sewing room or that studio to make that art happen. It's just, I mean, there's just a lot to appreciate and respect there, right? I'd love to share your story too. If you've got a story that you say, hey, this might inspire somebody else, then please reach out to me, lakesideqma at gmail.com. And we can do a Zoom interview and we can talk about all the things. And then I can put that up on you know, a special day, like a Saturday or something. and. You know, I'd maybe like to start doing that. Uh, I've got to get, like I said, I've got to get my infrastructure established here inside the studio before I start venturing off into yet another 
um, line of videos, but it is something that's dear to my heart. That my work that I did before I was quilting was um, legacy work as a personal historian, working with people to preserve their legacy, to preserve their life story so that they can have it in print, you know, beautifully curated and put into print so they can hand it down to their next generations. I really enjoyed that tremendously. So I'd like to carry that part of my story into the future here as well. And that is sharing your story. Thank you guys for being here today and giving me some of your valuable time. I really do appreciate it. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.